Hey electric vehicle owners and fans, I'm going to interrupt this video before it even gets started and we're going to do a little bit of a time warp. I recorded the majority of this video back in August when it was hot. Today as I finish it, it's October and it's not hot. So I had the idea back then when we had a series of really hot days to find out where in my Rivian R1T truck does it get the least hot out of all the common storage areas on a hot day. Where would you want to put your valuables? Uh, but I got kind of distracted with a lot of other videos and I never did the final edit and I never shared it out. So fast forward to today, I'm going to finish it and share it, but instead of tank tops and heat waves right now, it's October pumpkin spice and sweaters. But I think the point of the video and what you're going to learn from it is still valuable. So let's go ahead and roll the tape and enjoy. electric vehicle enthusiasts, Mark here with My EV Life. With heat waves happening across the country right now, I have a segment for you today that you just might find interesting. Have you ever wondered where the hottest or coolest places are inside your vehicle on a hot summer day? Well, I have. Specifically, I've always wondered where the hottest or coolest storage areas are on my Rivian R1T truck. There have been times when I need to leave something in the truck for a few hot hours, something like a bottle or a small cooler, and with so many storage options in the Rivian R1T truck, I've always been curious. Where's the best place to leave something so that it sees the lowest peak temperature during a hot afternoon in the sun? Well, I'm going to figure that out for you today in a segment I'll call my Rivian R1T Temp Test. I'm going to put five Wi-Fi temperature sensors in different parts of the truck, places where one might store something, and we're going to see what temperatures they get to and when throughout the day. Does that sound interesting? All right then. Let's go take a look. Let me show you the five locations in the Rivian truck where I place those temperature sensors. The first one I put here in the frunk. And if you have not seen this glorious space, check out my video frunk time for a full breakdown of the front trunk. The next one I put in the cabin and I chose the floor in the back seat because I figured that would give me the least amount of sun exposure. And after that, we move into another interesting storage space on this Rivian truck, that being the gear tunnel. Now I also encourage you to check out a video I have up for the gear tunnel if you have not seen that. And for the fourth sensor we go to the truck bed underneath the automatic tonneau cover. We'll open the tailgate with the push of the button. There's a sensor right there, place it dead center. And for the fifth and final location, the last temperature sensor is here under the truck bed in a little known storage space that can be used for either a spare tire or for just another place to store things. So we'll call this the underbed. So those are the five spots we'll be testing. And in case you're curious, here are my rudimentary control elements of this non-scientific study. I tested each Wi-Fi sensor in my kitchen the day before. They were all within one degree of each other. I also made sure the five sensors started at the same temperature right before I put them in place in the morning. This was a typical cool morning for Northern California with temperatures starting out in the low 60s. Throughout the day, there was no tampering. I did not open doors or windows, kept them closed. I also did not use the cabin cooldown feature, which Rivian offers in their app, which you see here. I just let the vehicle heat up as it normally would. I did use a standard windshield visor, since most of us use those, but I did not have anything on the sunroof. And the reason being, although my Tesla does have a sunroof visor, the Rivians are kind of hard to find right now, so most people don't have a sunroof visor. I don't have one, so we're letting the sun come through the top. We're also not driving the vehicle. It's staying in my driveway the whole day. It was kind of hard, but I had a day away from the Rivian. So let's talk about the weather on this slightly above average warm day in the San Francisco Bay Area. Now, since I have this professional Tempest weather station on my roof, I have a pretty accurate account of what the weather was and what temperature we had at my location. You can see here at 2.30 we peaked at 81.9 degrees Fahrenheit 
It bounced around and maintained that temperature till about 4 o'clock before it started to cool off. You can also look at the peak sun radiation for your location. Go to the National Weather Service, plug in your location, and it'll tell you that. For me, it was 1.13 p.m. in the afternoon is when I was getting the most amount of radiation from the sun. So that would be considered my solar noon for the day. And here is the app on my phone that connects to those five temperature sensors, allowing me to watch them throughout the day. And at the end of the day, it allows me to download the data, put it into some graphs. So let's go take a look at that now. So where in the vehicle do you think we saw the highest temperatures at the peak time of the day? Take a guess. And if you guessed in the truck bed, you would be right. This is where we saw the highest temperature at 128.1 degrees Fahrenheit at the peak time of 3 p.m. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. You have a large, black, flat, metal surface aimed right at the sun with very little insulation underneath it, heating up the space like an oven. And where do you think we would find our second hottest location on the vehicle? And yes, that was under the front, which is also a space underneath a large metal surface with very little insulation. A little more metal and plastic insulation than you find in the truck bed to no cover, and also not a black surface, but it still gets quite toasty up here as well. So it was here where we reached a temperature of 114.1 degrees Fahrenheit, also at the peak time of 3 p.m. And for the third warmest location on the vehicle, we go to the cabin, where we put the temperature sensor, if you remember, on the floor in the back seat. And it was here where we saw a peak temperature of 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit at 3 p.m. Now a couple things to call out. The temperatures are going down. This is a lot less hot here. But also notice that the temperature inside the cabin continues to climb throughout the day. So I'll make the point here that pretty much if you had an infinite amount of time, all of these sensors would eventually reach the same temperature over many, many, many hours. So in my test here, what I'm trying to show you is during the peak hot temperature time of the day, 3 p.m., where would you fare the best? So I'm going to be comparing all of these temperatures at 3 p.m. Now for the fourth hottest location, or you could also say the second coolest location, we have the gear tunnel. Here in this somewhat insulated space with a lot of things around it and above it, you get to hold your cooler temperatures that you had in the morning a lot longer throughout the day. So it was here that our temperature only reached 95.9 degrees Fahrenheit when others were soaring at 3 p.m. So it was cooler. And now for our coolest location, and by process of elimination, you probably know where this is, we have the under truck bed. Obviously, this space benefits from having other things around it, sheltering it. It's pretty much the lowest place in the vehicle. The tonneau cover takes the first hit of sun. The truck bed acts sort of like an attic for it. So this is the coolest place for you to store anything at 3 p.m. on a hot summer day where the temperature at 3 p.m. here only reached 90.3 degrees. Well, there you have it. Five temperature sensors in five different storage locations of the vehicle, where some hit as high as 128 degrees, some as low as 90 degrees at 3 p.m. So that's a swing of almost 40 degrees, which is pretty significant. And I guess my number one tip for you when you're storing things in this R1T truck on a hot day is to go low, either in the underbed, in the truck bed, or actually in the frunk, there's an under frunk that we didn't have a sensor in, but that can stay pretty cool there as well. Well, there you have it. I hope those little tidbits of data and insights are valuable to you. So now you know where to store your bottle of tequila or wine on a hot day. So now I need to pack up and hit the road. We've got the Vivian all charged up. We're heading out on another road trip, heading down to Pismo again. I'm going to spend some more time playing in the sand dunes there, and I'll probably have another video to share. So if you go ahead and like this video down below and hit that subscribe button, you'll get notified when I post that video. And while you're out on my channel, please check out some of the other videos that I have up there. If you have other ideas or videos you want me to cover on this Rivian R1T truck, or my Tesla Model Y, or my solar panels, or my house battery, please leave comments down below and I'll see if I can accommodate. Other than that, thank you for watching. I'll see you on the next video, and you have yourself a great EV day.